Their fire has always been a gypsy's friend. It's always been the place to gather around, to tell stories, to sing a song or two, uh, to give us our food. It would keep you warm, it would give you light, and it, it is a very good friend. But when it gets out of control, it can be a very bad enemy. I went to Basildon in Essex, Dow Farm, to see Richard Sheridan, the president of the Gypsy Council, who witnessed the death of two of his relations in a terrible fire about four years ago. Well, what do you think that actually started the fire? I believe it was a candle. See, the Catholic people that pray very hard at night time before they go to bed, and I think it was a candle that was caused. A candle fell over someone and went to sleep. I was the first about it, I heard everyone screaming. I thought of some of the are going to fight at, at first. And then I heard the saying that uh, there's, a, there's a big fire, it's a dangerous fire I heard. So everybody's panicking and running towards the fire. And the next thing we know that we run, we run down there, try and move all the gas bottles and stuff, and try and make everything safe, try and move trailers out of it, and everybody was all roaring. People saying they're not in there, they are in there, they're not in there, they are in there. It was very, very, very sad. Two people was lost their lives in it. A man and a woman, dear friends of mine. How, how fast? What, what was the speed? In a that matter they went of up? seconds, was flame. In seconds, yeah. it didn't take a couple. In a couple of minutes, every, uh, you could see the, the flames really, really high up into the sky. You know. One Sally went on fire, it set a caravan alight next door to it. When that went on fire, it caught another scorch, another Sally, and then the one at the back of that again, that one also went up on fire also. I know it was four years ago, Richie, but uh, how much of effect did it have on your community? They're still affected over it, Joe. They'll never get over it, I don't think, to be honest. It's been a tragic that's going to be in their mind for the rest of our lives. Yeah. It's Joe, Tim Gibson from the Kemp Fire and Rescue Service has come to me trailer to give us a few tips on fire safety. What are the key things for you around candles? If you're using them, make sure they're on a nice firm base. Make sure they're on a tray that's going to catch that wax. Make sure they're away from curtains so you're not going to ignite curtains and so on. Um, and before you go to bed, make sure that they're out. And that goes for ashtrays and things like that then, Tim? Yeah, of course it does, John. It doesn't need much thinking about it, does it? You lay down a cigarette, it's not in an ashtray, it's not extinguished, it falls over onto the furniture. Before you know where you are, you've got an inferno. Right. What are the dangers about electrics in a trailer then, Tim? One of the key things, Joe, is overloading of sockets. As you can see here, we've got the classic multi-block, and we've got adapter upon adapter. One of the danger points, Joe, is loading multi-adapter onto multi-adapter onto multi-adapter onto multi-adapter almost like a Lego block until such a point we've got so many in there we get the overload conditions and burning up of the contacts classic overload condition too many adapters in too few sockets yeah electricity um, Joe in, in trailers it, it's a really significant problem for us because in houses as you know we've got ring mains they're fixed and it's fixed wiring and so on um, in trailers that's not the case as you're well and truly aware You've got an odd socket here, an odd socket there. And modern living dictates that we've got things like kettles, a couple of kilowatts there, heater, a couple of kilowatts there. We've got cooking appliances, maybe a couple of kilowatts, two or three kilowatts here and there. On their own, they're no problem. But when you add them all together, we've got a massive, massive load. And that's when we get overload occurring. And probably the first time you become aware of it is when there's a fire starting within the trailer, when it's all too late. I've heard about this uh, carbon monoxide. Well, what exactly is carbon monoxide? Gas appliances need oxygen around them to allow them to burn efficiently. If they don't burn efficiently, what happens is a carbon monoxide will fill the trailer. If there's not good ventilation, and this is why you mustn't block the vents, then suddenly we've got a gas-filled chamber. So what you're saying is that 
Don't block my vents because them vents are very important in my trailer to make the gas burn efficiently. Of course you can buy a carbon monoxide detector. Is that the same as a smoke detector? It's not the same but the principles are the same. It gives you that early warning to alert you that something is a life threatening condition that's developing within your trailer. Is, is there a device that does both? No, th there isn't one for both unfortunately. But what is really really important is that you have a smoke detector to detect the smoke and a carbon monoxide detector to detect obviously the carbon monoxide. Can I just ask you a question? What sort of nighttime routine do you have? Well, every night I uh, make sure that if I'm smoking, I put all my uh, dog ends and that in an ashtray with a drop of water in. I make, disconnect all my plugs that we're not using. I turn off all my gas bottles and then I walk outside to make sure that the fire outside's out and I empty my ashtrays into that into the, in, out there. What about your candles, Joe? All my candles are, uh, are actually put out. Um, we don't have any flame, any live flame whatsoever in the trailer. The key issue is in a house you've got bricks, you've got mortar. In a trailer we've got plastics, we've got wood and more importantly in a main structure we've got metals that will just um, in increase the rate of burning and turn the old place into an inferno in a very, very short space of time. Unfortunately, fires do happen. So we went to the local site to have a look round to see what sort of things we can do to stop fire from spreading. I mean, one of the key elements to the fire service is the distance between um, the trailers. I mean, for example, let's have a, a, a little look across at this one here. You can quite clearly see the, uh, the six metre, um, and it's good to see that spacing. If you've got a trailer that's perhaps severely involved in fire, and you've got one fairly close to it, well, of course, the chances of fire spread are far, far greater. And one of the things I'm very impressed with here is the, the parking of vehicles. You, you do get uh, trailers where people park in the vehicles so close to them, and uh, of course, again, potential for fire spreads massive. But here, as we can see, well away from the trailers, that's really what we're looking at. Um, plenty of space for access for fire appliances attending a site. You can see that we haven't got gas cylinders lying around. Gas cylinders uh, in a fire situation can take off like torpedoes. And until you've actually seen one go, um, I can assure you that they are absolutely terrifying. You can see the fire extinguisher affixed to the wall in a suitable position. What's your recommendations on uh, fire extinguishers then? Well, we'll go across and have a little look, Joe. Yeah, you can see here that um, we've got a three litre water extinguisher uh, but if you just remove it from the wall for a second uh, just to demonstrate that to you effectively what that pin does you, you pull it out and that allows you to release the mechanism so you can operate the trigger all the time that pins in place you can't operate the trigger so that's a safety mechanism if you come along and you find that pin missing then you know that somebody's used that extinguisher for some reason and uh, it's unlikely to be effective Right, can we use this on any type of fire, Tim? No, absolutely not. What we're talking about are cardboards, wood, um, basic furniture, certainly not um, electrical equipment, certainly not fats and oils, certainly not uh, engine oils, that kind of thing, and certainly not petrol-based uh, materials, uh, because all you do there is make the situation far, far worse. So what kind of uh, things can we use the uh, sand bucket on? The sand bucket is for all those kind of oil spills. Quite clearly, we can use that to stem the flow, to smother it, and, uh, and to extinguish the fire that way by excluding the oxygen effectively. Just now, we spoke about gas bottles. In no way should you think these things are not dangerous. Because a few years ago, they put one in the back of a van and set a light to it. And this time, the bottle was standing upright. Well, 
wherever you're on the site or on the roadside, whatever happens, make sure that these gas bottles are put and connected on safely. Well, there's a really good example, Joe. It's, it's one bottle, um, it's isolated, there's not lots and lots around it, there's no combustibles close by, and a really good example of how it's been connected in a very, very safe manner. And no other cylinders surrounding it. Um, the flip side of that, of course, Joe, is um, this one here we're just going to look at. You can see them really, really close to the trailer. And of course, if these things do go off, the intensity of the fire will be severely increased because you've got two. And um, the cylinders will literally go off like torpedoes. Yep. So, of course, what we don't want to see is that cylinder suddenly um, go off uh, with a bang, explode, yep. and uh, the fire intensify, and suddenly we've got the old trailer alight. Yep. So, what we need to see is this thing actually taken from this position and removed, yep. taking it away from the trailer and setting it somewhere safely in a nice upright position. That is effectively removing one more problem from our fire scene for us and increasing the safety uh, of those that are within that trailer. Yeah. And just, just moving on a step further, just combustibles in general. You've got um, wood uh, in reasonable proximity to uh, these trailers. But more importantly, you've got things like generators and stored right alongside there. We've got, as you can see, that petrol can. What we'd really like to see is that taken away from that area, removed it from that alongside that generator, placed remotely from the trailer and from the generator, thereby reducing the risk. So what about at the night time when the generator goes out, like you've got your television on, you've got everything on, like in, in there, and all of a sudden the generator goes out and then you've got to go out and uh, sort the generator out? It's like most things in life, Joe. Quite often things aren't convenient for us, are they? And um, I appreciate the point you're making, but of course, as soon as you start to top a generator up that's still switched on, um, that's still hot, you start pouring the petrol, you're using naked lights to see it, suddenly from having a, quite a safe environment, you've got somebody that's engulfed in flames, absolutely horrendous uh, injuries caused by that kind of thing. So again, just take a little bit of time out to let it cool down. And I know it's going to be difficult because, you know, perhaps you've got the wife that's watching the telly and, you know, kind of the lights are on, there's things we're trying to do and so on. Um, but the, the overriding message is, it's all about ensuring that we're safe. And to do that, we need to make sure that we do any refueling of the generator um, in a position away from the trailer to make sure that it's cool and to make sure we're not using naked lights so that we can see. Yep. What about the distance between these trailers, Kim? Well, this is a good example, Joe, actually. Um, looking here, we've got a good six metre gap, which is what we want to see, um, particularly in terms of fire spread. And I know it's not always achievable because you haven't always got that distance, but, but here we have a really, really good example. Both on the site and on the road site, Tim was very pleased with the distance between the caravans because once they go, believe me, with the plastic and everything else, they burn like hell. The next trailer is getting scorched and within minutes that too is alive. Very soon the combined heat from both of these trailers catch the third one alive. There are a lot of do's and don'ts in fire safety, but it all comes down to a bit of common sense. So be safe, be lucky, and make sure this don't happen to you. It was a really sad night. Two people lost their lives in it. You know? I hope events like this don't ever happen again. <laughs>